Big D. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Submission Fishing Live podcast. Hopefully, you're all doing well out there. What's going on, everybody on Instagram? Benji, what's going on, brother? Just letting you guys know we're going to be on uh, YouTube, starting the live show over there. So if you guys want to check it out, come say what's up. Leonard, what's going on, man? Oos. 20-month member, man. That's awesome. Thank you for the membership, Leonard. You're the man. Hopefully, you've been fishing. Big Water Outdoors, what's going on? Driftwood Fishing, how you guys doing today? Didn't get to see my boy's face. Yeah, dude, hop on the YouTube. What you been up to? And just living the plum life? What's up, Benji? Just getting the uh, YouTube going here. And... um yeah, we'll get the we'll get the show started. Let some people roll in here. I know the five o'clock time isn't like ideal for people, so but you know, we try to we try to do what we can over here in Florida. Mel, what's going on, dude? Good to see you. Yeah, the Instagram lives are cool. They're not as interactive though. You have to like read that that small little text. It's supposed to rain Saturday. Really? Was that your guys' trip? Lalo Fish, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Dude, that sucks if it does. Was that when the trip was, Aaron? Your uh the spotty or not your spotty, your uh sheephead, yellowtail kind of La Jolla get together. Never fails, man. That's just crazy too, because the bite's been like pretty good too. It's been popping off. Works out great for me now that my schedule is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Heck yeah, Benji. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's just better for some people. I mean, there's always some group of people that work later or get off earlier. You know what I'm saying? So that's super, that's super cool. That's a brutal schedule, though. Davion Parks, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. 35% chance. That's nothing, dude. You got to roll the dice on that. Although, I don't know. Southern California has been getting the beating with the rain. Before, I'd be like, who cares? It's not going to rain. But lately, it's been pretty bad. I'm still going to get some content at Mission Bay Fishing for Halibut Dog. Hopping on the yaks. Yeah, man. I mean, that work. What's going on, guys, on Instagram? We're over on uh, YouTube if you want to join us. Uh, about to start the YouTube show, get it going. We got some announcements to make, um, pretty good stories too. We got some new stories going on and then some of your questions and we'll talk fishing. Obviously it'll be good. Water Jack says we got too many crybaby friends. Oh, they already, already wanted to bail out. I mean, Roger, what's going on, man? Just getting the YouTube, getting the YouTube live going here. You still over at a Dana landing, Roger? Ducks of Daddy, one of those 10 grabs getting restocked. They are they are almost here. I've got the uh, UPS confirmation, so pretty soon. Pretty soon. I know we've been without them for a long time. You guys got to check some of the uh, tackle stores, too, because even like um, you know, like Tackle Supply had them for a long time. They sold out at the show, but um, Tackle Express sells them. Um, I think Shark Bait has like an online store, too. So a lot of these online stores actually have the jigs. Um and um, you can actually get a hold of them, but yeah, we're gonna have a restock pretty soon. I know we. The thing is, we've already got like a big back order for um, a lot of tackle stores, so the tackle stores will have the restocks. Um, hopefully, in the next uh, week or two, once we get them in, they're going out. And then on the next run, we're gonna have a new color as well, so it should be pretty good. That's awesome, man. They're almost here, just in time. I know the spotty's blowing up. Fish are already read the eye, right? They don't care, man. Yeah, Driftwood Fishing said, I uh, saw some 10 grams at Data Landing. So they're still out there. I mean, if you go to like a fishing rep site, they've got a, um, like one of those finders where you can find the, that's what I'm looking for, like the location finders where you can find like what tackle stores they're in, stuff like that. Hopefully Turner's soon. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking me if we're in Turner's. I did hit up the uh, guy that buys the jigs there. You know, send him an email. I met him at PCS a little bit, and then I sent him an email. You know, just say what's up, introduce myself, see if he wants it. 
Then you said starting to warm up in bullhead. More time on the water now. Yeah, warm up in bullhead is like the heat of a thousand suns. All right, guys, let's get this party started. Welcome, everybody, to the Submission Fishing Live podcast. I'm your host, Muto. Glad you could join us. Uh, we got a good show for you guys today. We got a, actually some pretty good news stories, uh, some fishing stories um, regarding some poaching that uh, Captain Dan sent to me from the, uh, the CDFW, so we'll check some of those out. We've got some announcements uh, based on some of the names of the jigs, um, some upcoming things. We have trips, um, some jerseys and stuff we have for sale, so we'll go over that a little bit, and then obviously... We'll talk about some of the fishing going on. You know, it's picking up, getting hot. And obviously, we got a lot of questions from you guys from Instagram. And um, yeah, we'll just go from there. We'll see what we got. So let's um, see here on the first. So Captain Dan sent me this. You guys know Captain Dan. He's a friend of the show. Uh, he's a captain. He really is a legit captain. He's got his, um, I don't know, he always tells me some 100,000 ton license or something like that. I'm not really sure what it was. But um, yeah, we have the news article here. Uh, apparently, there was some yeah CDFW bust uh, a poaching ring in Southern California. It looks like right there uh, in San Diego. It says the California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, law enforcement uncovered a network of recreational fishermen engaged in commercial fishing businesses with no regard to limits, documentation, or adhering to the highly regulated business practices of the commercial fishing industry. The investigation revealed more than 5,500 pounds of fish were unlawfully bought and sold for more than $26,000. Uh, wildlife officers investigated David Haworth, 60, of San Diego, Nicholas Haworth, 28, of La Jolla. Uh, it looks like they were buying and selling recreational caught fish, uh, failing uh, to land the fish. So that means documenting the fish once it reaches lands. Uh, facilitating the operation of unlicensed fish businesses and falsifying uh, landing documents to hide their poaching crimes. Uh, CDFW officers spent more than six months on the investigation, revealing evidence that the Haworths were illegally buying, reselling recreationally caught fish. So the association, through the association networks of recreational fishermen, then it lists a bunch of people here. So I don't know if you know any of these guys. I haven't heard of them. Well, I was officers that obtained evidence from, is it Lucas Grisky, San Diego, Mitchell Radford, San Diego, Brandon DeMilo, San Diego, Tanner Whitmarsh, El Cajon, Trevor Whitmarsh, El Cajon, David Brown, San Diego. Uh, they were all selling fish. So I guess they were selling fish to this guy. And then this guy was selling the fish illegally. Uh, but they all got busted, it looks like. Um, they all pleaded guilty. It looks like, and um, yeah, some pretty, I actually some pretty light fines. I see some $10,000 fines, 5,000. I don't think is that bad. One of these dudes, uh, the Tanner and Trevor, they got a $60,000 fine each. So they must've been the biggest offenders, but um, yeah, guys, don't be moral of the story is don't be selling fish. So if you guys are recreational fishermen, um, you cannot be selling, you can't sell fish. Um, you know, you got to have a commercial license and it all has to be done at the landing. Fish has to be counted for. It's very regulated, especially in California. And uh, Captain Dan sent me this email and he was saying how it's like it is legal in some states. And I was looking up um, actually in Florida. I saw the story and apparently so it's illegal to sell recreational fish. But in Florida, apparently you can sell fish as a recreational fisherman. So it's kind of crazy depending where you were. If they, if these people were kind of doing this in Florida, they probably uh, would have been okay. It's my understanding of Florida. I was just looking it up real quick that you can, you still have to get like a license, uh, but it's not a commercial license, uh, but you take like a little course, uh, but then you can sell your fish um, is my understanding. I have to do some more research, but I think if you go out and, you know, catch some redfish or uh, probably some, snapper or something like that you can't sell it it actually and it says you can sell them um you can sell them to wholesalers too or you can sell them online or at the landing and stuff like that which is kind of crazy you know you're still at the mercy of like the recreational rules you're not a commercial fisherman so you still have to do bag limits the species and you have to catch them within the basically confines of the law but um that's just crazy you know different areas but in california it's a big no-no man those guys are getting some fat fines so um, don't be selling your fish guys. 
at least if you're in California, if you're in Florida, you can do it, but you still need permits. I, I you still got to take a class and then get a permit, but I don't think the permit costs anything. You just get one and then you can sell fish, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, that's nuts. Mission fishing and a wife lucky craft. No, man, lucky craft is good. We don't intermingle with lucky craft. They're um, lucky craft is the um, like the jerk the jerk baits, the stick baits. Jigpara, maybe Jigpara. Jigpara is pretty big though. Major craft is huge. Lucky craft, I know we don't really compete with. I mean, Jigpara. Yeah, Jigpara was like you know I was using the Jigparas a lot. They're kind of like. I tried to make them better. That was like the whole thing. You know, they were out of stock and hard to find. And we really modified them to kind of make a better product. But they're pretty big. I don't I don't think they're I don't think those guys are going anywhere. I think there's a there's enough in the market for all of us to uh get along, I think. Says I think that Tanner guy was the guy that got caught fishing the charter boat in the MPA last year. Oh, really? From Oceanside? Dude, that'd be nuts. The Electra, right? I think, well, yeah, because the Electra got caught fishing in the MPA and that guy charters his boat out of um, Oceanside. And I know they got busted. Captain Dan, ooh, Screedy's from Seattle, man. We were just talking about that uh, story you sent us about the, you know, recreational fishermen selling fish. So thank you for sending me that story. And then we got another story actually from Captain Dan here. Let's see. And this one is pertaining to, this is the California one, uh, pertaining to fishing licenses. So uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife is pleased to announce the launch of the CDWF license app for mobile devices. So this is actually pretty cool. The new application allows residents and non-residents to display California sport fishing licenses and validations on their mobile phones uh, and other mobile devices in lieu of physical licenses. Users may download and view various CDWF online courses, including hunting, fishing, regulations. So this, this is actually a really good thing. So uh, good on these guys for putting this out there. Uh, we sometimes think progress moves too slowly, but the Department of Fish and Wildlife has moved at full speed in making the fishing license valid for 365. Yeah, that just came out uh, last year and then it's modernized the fishing license going digital. So I mean, that, that's really handy. Basically, you know, not having to carry around that piece of paper all the time. Everybody's got a phone on them. So it's good to see. Good to see we're uh, living in 2024. I know we went out fishing with uh <laughs> went fishing with Cal one time and we were out in Mission Bay. We actually went offshore and we're fishing some of the kelp out there. We were coming back and we got stopped. And I think honestly, this might be the only time I've been stopped by um the game wardens actually on the water. They pulled up in like one of their boats. We were all in kayaks, obviously, and they checked our licenses, checked our bags, see if we had any fish. And so we were just paddling around and they had Cal and we're like, man. <laughs> This is like taking an awfully long time. And he'd freaking forgotten his license. Um, and they were pretty cool. He he was able to pull up like an, but he had his phone and he was able to pull up an email, you know, from when he bought it and they let him go. It was no big deal, but yeah, man, what a headache that can be sometimes. So that's good. As long as you don't drop your phone in your water like me, you guys will be okay. Thank you, Captain Dan, for those stories. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, those are the, probably the biggest things in the news. I looked up stuff on the East Coast here. Didn't really find anything interesting. So all the drama is just popping off in Southern California, apparently. All right, guys, on Instagram, I'm going to sign off. If you guys want to find us, hit us up on YouTube and um, come join the show. Later, guys. All right. Cave Dog, what's going on? We're just talking about you. This is a story for you, Cal, that they're uh, they're now allowing uh, digital licenses on your phone, so you can put it there. I was telling about the time when you 
forgot your uh, license when we all went fishing in Mission Bay. Man, that was probably like two, two almost three years ago. Crazy. Yeah, that was nuts. I dropped my phone at Tanner Bay. <laughs> Tuna probably ate it like a flat fall. They probably did. I lost a, like two phones one year. I think it was like 2021, maybe 2022. I think I lost two phones, man. That sucked. Kiwi reacts. Oops, what's going on, man? How's everything in Texas? Hopefully it's well. We got everybody representing here. Southern California, Texas, Florida. Doc Stalker, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Let's see. So we got the um, that out of the way. So we do have some announcements. I got some important stuff uh, to talk about as far as submission fishing goes. We're going to have to make some changes. Right? Where was, where was that two or three years ago, dude? That was so funny. But uh, yeah, check it out. CDDFW just uh, put it in place. And so now you can just, uh, it was 2022, man, it was two years ago. It's all right, man. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, yeah, so submission fishing wise, we've got um, submission at sea is coming up. And I know I touched on this a little bit. So if you guys want to go fish with me, uh, fish with a lot of these guys, we're it's a charter to put on for the past two years, kind of become an annual thing. Um, the past charters have been year long and uh, not year long day long trips, uh, nothing too major. I know a lot of these guys, a lot of you guys wanted, um, longer trips. So we've, we're doing a two day trip. We're going to go on the Voyager and the pause has already been made. So we got the boat reserved. The plan is uh, to go out to the 60 mile bank. You know, anything can change. Obviously, uh, it's going to be a while. It's in October, October 23rd to the 25th. We're going to get on the Voyager. It's a two-day trip. And um, the plan is to kind of hit the 60-mile bank and leave the 23rd at night, probably fish bluefin at night, um, and then big, deep rockfish during the day. And then we're going to do probably, you know, obviously bluefin at night again. And then we'd probably have a little bit of the day. Depending how far we go out, we would come back. Um, either that morning or night. So we leave October 23rd, come back to 25th. Um, yeah. So we're going to do a, do a two dare this time. So I know it's not for everybody and it's a limited load boat, you know, and years past, we've done some of the bigger boats for the day trips. We've been able to put on 30, 35 people. Well, we've only got about 15 spots available on this one. Um, so if you guys want to, if you guys go to the website, you can sign up on the email list. We've been sending emails out for stuff like that. If you want to reserve your spot, um, it's eight hundred seventy-five dollars is the cost. Uh, that includes uh, all your meals. That includes obviously the trip, your meals, um, and then all the usual stuff. Usually, we either do a shirt. We might do a hat this year, like a custom one for the trip, kind of a one-off, limited edition thing. Uh, I do jigs. Usually, we do raffles, giveaways, um, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, if you guys ever have questions uh, or want to fish you know, ask me fishing questions, slow pitch questions, you know, I'm there to, you know, help answer for you guys as well as fish myself. So if you guys want to learn slow pitch jigging, you know, out there deep, or if you're just a, you're into it, you're already good at it. And you want to know how, how to show us all how it's done, come join us. Uh, so, and it's a pretty cool group because a lot of these guys are fishermen. Um, you know, and a lot of people we know already, and that really helps out on these big boats, you know, from the chaos. A lot of new people going out there. Not saying new people can't go on if they want, if you guys want to learn to come join, but the majority of people are pretty experienced. So it makes the um makes it a little less chaotic when you're trying to pull up big ass bluefin and multiple people get hooked up. So uh Voyager, mark your calendars, October twenty third through the twenty fifth. Only fifteen spots available, guys. So um I don't think they're live yet, but like I said, you can join the um email list and get on there if you guys want kind of first rights and we're going to do the we're going to get a map of the bunks and it's going to kind of be first up first come first serve so if you uh, buy your ticket and put your deposit down you'll get to be able to choose from the bunks so you know first people sign up you can get the prime uh prime, prime bunk spots so yeah jeremy Oos, what's going on man good to see you glad you could join us do you do payments? We do. Um, it's all kind of done through Shopify. I'll, we'll have to see if that works. I think we're going to do, you don't have to do the whole thing up front. I, we will do a deposit. I think we're going to do like half down and then probably um, the other half would be due kind of four weeks before we left. So, I mean, you could like, 
So I don't know. I don't know if you can like do payments on it through that, but it doesn't all have to be up front. It, it is half up front and then um, just the rest would be due um, four weeks uh, ahead of when we go. But I'll, I'll look at I'll look at the payments. I'll ask Jessica. I know it's not something we've been able to facilitate since it's everything runs through like our e-commerce thing. I, I know there's ways to do everything, but we'll see if we can get back to you on that. I'll try to see if Rain Shadow will sponsor a couple slow pitch rods uh, for the trip. Let me touch base with them. Yeah, man, that'd be awesome. Uh, Aaron actually made me a. Well, I don't have my rods here, but he actually made me a custom uh, Rain Shadow slow pitch rod. So I actually have one. He wrapped it himself. No gaff fishing, flip it. <laughs> yeah, dude, you guys should have seen Cal flip this Dorado on the last trip. <laughs> that was awesome, dude. <laughs> no nonsense. The problem is I use slow pitch rods. You can't, you can't bounce with slow pitch rods. I tried it one time and I lost my fish and the jig because I either that or you break the rod. So I've broken rods doing it and then one time I tried to bounce a Benito and it hit the side of the boat. And then I had like my jig fell off and it was all rigged up. And then the fish came off with it. So last time, last time I bounced on a, some slow pitch action. Yeah. I mean, tell them to hit me up, you know, it'd be cool. Oh, you've seen the rod. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cal is a madman. Cal's my wife's favorite. She always loves Cal. She's like, oh, is Cal going to be there wherever I go? PCS or whatever. I, had to, I took a picture of Cal at PCS just to send to my wife. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And then, so submission to see. And we have the fishing jerseys coming out. Uh, we did send emails. I was, you guys, before this, that's why I came on a little late. I was trying to find the pictures of my email, but I can't. Um, but we did send out proof. Um, the concept art uh, of what the jersey is going to look like. Uh, they are fishing jerseys and we're doing kind of a pre-order. And I know a lot of you guys have kind of put in your um, sizes. They are submission fishing, uh, fishing team jerseys. They've got fish scales, like patterns on the side and then the hood. And then, um, you know, they've got the submission fishing design. They're pretty badass. You guys can see those if you check the email and those will be live pretty soon too. So we're just trying to kind of get a count on which ones we need to get since the jerseys are you know really expensive to have made. They're going to be $80 retail. If you go to weapons um, website, they're the ones who are making them. They kind of make like uh, paintball jerseys and stuff. They made jerseys for Hobies as well. So if you guys want to see them and the quality that they do, uh, they're really nice. You know, they're going to be thick. Um, really badass jerseys, not just like some thin little sun, sun shirts, you know, these are good stuff. So we're kind of doing a pre-order for those as well. So submission at sea and then the, um, the jerseys. So those are kind of the two big things we've got going on. Two XLT or three XL. Yeah, I think they can make it. Cause somebody asked for a five X and, um, uh, we asked Carlos and he was like, yeah, we can, apparently they've got them. So yeah, we're just trying to get, you know, stuck with them. So if you guys have a size, just um, make sure you email us so we do a good count. What we're trying to avoid is having, um, is we have to buy a minimum, right, in order to get it to work. So I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of sizes. So I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to have any smalls or anything made because those are like the smalls and kind of mediums, like don't really sell that much. Maybe we'll do a couple mediums, but we're trying to gauge like, do I buy, I don't want to buy too much larges. And then really I needed like four more double X's or something like that. So we're kind of seeing where everybody's with that, with that so we can get a more accurate count. Unless we do like a pre-sell and sold them all and then could do like a really accurate count. But I think we got to order more than we're able to pre-sell. 5X total buff. Yeah, that's for Brian. Brian likes to fish. He said he wants an XL that makes him look buff. No way, dude. Cal, Cal's a large all day. He's a real man. So submission at sea and uh, the jerseys. If you guys aren't on our mailing list, go to submission fishing and you can actually join our mailing list. We do a lot of stuff through there. 
Uh, we do sales. Um, we have sales and promotions. We advertise it there. And then we do a lot of the pre-orders too. So if you guys don't want to get left out, that's the easiest way uh, to really kind of stay in the loop. All right. Now onto some business we've got. So we've talked about those two things. Um, there are going to be some, now this is not really unfortunate. I guess they're just kind of changes and happenings on the site. So, or, or with submission fishing and we've changed some things on the site. Um, so we've been, as we've been growing, so it's, it's actually, this is a good problem, but it's really an annoying one too, is that, uh, make a long story short, we're having to change some of the names of the jigs and stuff. Uh, we filed for like a lot of trademarks and stuff, you know, as we've been growing, we're like, okay, we need trademarks and all this, but we're finding that some of the trademarks that we're doing for some of the jigs are like either already taken or they've like been contested. Some of our trademarks are fine. Like submission fishing, the name and stuff was fine. So we got that. We were able to trademark that. Um, we trademarked a lot of the names, but some of the jig names like um, assassin, unfortunately, like we're already taken. And so like we're having to switch those out. It was, and really the same thing happened with, you know how we were calling them um, like slow death jigs. Um, and then we just changed them to submission jigs. The problem was because slow death was already taken like in the fishing industry. And what our lawyer basically does, we have like a patent lawyer or whatever, or the trademark lawyer. So he, he'll look at things like in the, as like a whole, he'll, he'll like do a search for it and he'll say, yeah, let's file for that. And slow death like came up pretty quick. So we like just kind of left that one alone. We're like, okay, we'll, we'll just switch the branding. But now that we've sent, we sent out like all the names of the jigs to see if we can like trademark the names and all the different things. But now it's been like months, but some of them come back and they're like, yeah, we've, <laughs> we can't use those. Cause they were already somewhere claimed in like the eighties and a long time ago. And they're already used within the fishing industry. So like we're having to change. So we're like, the first one we're changing is the assassin. Um, so it's just been a pain in the ass. Like we've been changing it on the website and then we had all this packaging made. So now we're having to like repackage all the stuff. So if you buy any, so we're changing the name to the mercenary, um, you know, we looked at that. We, he thinks that one should be good to go. And it really has a kind of a similar connotation. You know, it's kind of like the jig that does can finish any job. It can be cast. It can be vertical fish. Um, but nothing's changing as far as the jig goes, the jigs, the colors, uh, it's all the same, but it is, will be a name change, which is obviously just annoying because, um, people already, you know, people are like getting to learn the names of the jigs and they're becoming kind of no names in the fishing industry and then having to change them. But it's just part of growing it, Like I said, it's, it's one of those problems that's good to have. It just means you're kind of doing things and it's just the growing pains of trying to run a business. I've never run a retail business before in my life. So this is all new to me. We're trying to do it right. But, um, it's better than getting down the road and figuring out that something's a major problem. So we're just trying to do it right out of the gate. Um, and as we're looking to grow and expand and get into more stores, uh, become like a more viable business, just things that have to happen. So when you guys, if you do guys, if you guys do buy some assassin jigs, we'll probably just have to black out some of the names on them. Um, we ship them out, just maybe put it like markers to them. And then, um, we've already talked to our supplier and he's already making new cards and, uh, which kind of sucks because we had, so we have this order coming in, which is already on its way. So that's not a big deal because the the cards are already made i guess it's it is actually a big deal because the cards are already made so now we're stuck with all these assassin cards um so we'll either just have to black them out or change the card or something then we're trying to get them sent to the supplier but anyways we have this huge order coming in the end of september i'm not i'm not sorry september in the end of april we already we've like placed one of the biggest orders we've ever placed and that one's coming in in april and they've already repackaged <laughs> they've packaged all the assassins already and they've been making the other one. So now we have to pay. We, we got to repay to have all the assassins remade with the new cards and correct cards. And they've been labeled with the, the PCU stickers and it's just, it's been a huge headache. So that's what's going on. And um, yeah. So if you see name changes on that stuff, it's that's, that's what's happening. No, no need for alarm. Just switching it out, trying to make it legit. Corey King, what's up, man? I don't know if I said hey to you. Driftwood wants a pink one. What a pink jersey. 
like the the woman's version. I'll be able to make that happen. We'll have to see. We should get a anything over two X. You have to wear submission fishing co blanket or a flag. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, the pink jersey. Stickers. Yeah, we got stickers. Is that what you're asking? We have to re-sticker. Oh, yeah. Oh, putting stickers over the, the packaging. Yeah. I was like, where do I where do I get those made? Because my factory, our factory does everything. They do um they pour the jigs, they tie the hooks, they do the packaging. Um, they package them, they put the stickers on, like they do pretty much everything. But yeah, stickers would probably be the way to go. I think you're right. Yeah, I'm straight up like, I'm just going to take a striper. I mean, I was just going to take a, a Sharpie and just go down the, right there on the package. Like, it's not really that big of a deal. It's still going to be the same, same jig, just with a different name. Like this run that we have will be different. I don't know. Yeah, I could probably get some cool stickers made. That don't look too janky. <laughs> Black tape and white Sharpie. There you go. That's funny. So yeah, so when you now the assassin is no longer the assassin, it is the mercenary. So if you see the mercenary jig, shout it out. Or if you see the name, it's it's not a new jig, it's a it's the old jig. It's the new same jig. Team submission up for the tournament up north. Yeah, I'd love to do a submission team. That'd be pretty cool. I'd be down to sponsor it too. We get some slayers out there. We'll take some first prizes. And we've already got some good. We've got we've got like a pro team. We've got like uh, Brian likes to fish. Uh, Danny Martinez uh, is on there. Some of the guys I sponsors that do. I mean, they're all like spotty bull winners. They absolutely crush it. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that at all. Corey King says, now that I have my kayak, I'm down for the flag. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, I saw you on your kayak, man. How do you like it? And kayak fishing just opens up a whole new world. It's like, I, so when I first started, uh, well, actually I was an offshore fisherman. Like I was a boat guy mostly, just going on like party boats and stuff like that. And then I would basically just shore fish uh, pretty poorly, to be honest with you. I just go out there like Carlsbad Lagoon a lot or like try to surf fish uh, not very successfully. And then once COVID hit, I got the kayak and yeah, it's just a whole new world. Once you get out on the water, it's like, it's unbelievable how much different it is. Uh, it's, unless you like really know the spots. Cause I see some of these guys out there shore pounding and fishing from shore. Uh, there's been a lot of guys like posting a ton of content for us. Um, really great anglers like uh, OC fishing slayer, and um, some of these guys just been crushing it and they all fish from shore, man. They get on these docks or they like fish in the middle of the city, but they know where these spotties are and they've been fishing the submission jigs and they can really get on them. But aside from that, it's like kayak is just like a whole new world. Just the places you can get getting on the water makes such a huge difference. So congratulations, man. I'm glad you were finally got out there. Looking forward to seeing a lot more picks. It's good too. It's healthy. It gets you out in the sun. There's like just so much benefits to it. It's great. You should make some submission fishing rat fink stickers. Yeah, I could. Was it like uh, bring the 90s back? Was that late 80s, early 90s? All these young kids have no idea what the rat fink stuff is. Especially you being a mechanic. That's like right up your alley. If you guys don't know, check out the... Uh, go Google rat fink. That's funny, man. That's, that was like all the craze back when I was a kid. Oops, Judge. Thanks for joining. Spotty at best as I volunteer as tribute. You want to be on the submission fishing team? We'll send you up, man. This is no words. I'm hooked. Big Water Outdoor says kayak is the best way to fish. Kayak's fun, but the problem with fishing is
the problem with fishing is like it's a gateway drug because it's like first you start off on the shore and then you get a kayak and then once you get the kayak then you get the boat i mean that's like the path i've gone down and now it's like i hardly fish for my kayak anymore because i'm like so i got a day to fish the conditions are good and i'm like ah, do i take the kayak or I just hop on my boat and take the boat out. So and most of the time I take the boat out, even though a lot of guys like, well, I'm going to make more content, uh, kayak content for sure. Cause it's a lot more relatable, but once you go down that road, man, it's just, it's, it's, it consumes you short pounding to kayak, to boat. What's next? I guess once you've hit boat, you've already hit the, uh, you've hit the limit. I guess spear fishing I might be up there. I don't know if I'd be down for that though. Hallie is hot at the lagoon. Sometimes. I always catch little dink ones there. The Halley bite is hot at the lagoon. Yeah, I do. I've I've heard there's been like some really epic halibut fishing there. I've only ever caught really small ones. Uh, but it is known for that. It's a super sandy bottom. That makes sense. I said, did the first, Corey King said the first three spotties on the kayak were on the sumo. That's what I like to hear, man. That's awesome. I know I was, I was honored to have submission fishing, have a submission jig, put uh, the first fish in your boat. That's awesome, man. It's a true honor. So I want to be on the submission team. Big water outdoors. Yeah, that'd be cool to put a team together. I mean, that'd be, be something I'd be down for. Flex the muscles with the tumbler. Helicopter fishing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a thing? It probably is. There's so many like types of fishing. Really, when you get into it, ice fishing, spear fishing. Like they do what's out here in Florida called gigging. Uh, for what they fish is flounder. Flounder is real. They look like halibuts. They don't get nearly as big, but um. They're a flat fish. They got the side eye, you know, on the, the top of their head. And what they do out here is that it's so the water out here is like very, very shallow. And I guess they put either go out to the day or at night. You can do it like with your lights on or you put a light on a boat. You actually just see them on the ground and you basically just you stab them or you spear them. So not even spear fishing like with a spear gun. You just like you got this pole and you just stab them and then throw them in the boat. And it's called gigging. And it's uh I think there's a season for it, but it's legit. But it's a flounder gigging is a thing. It's another another different thing. Spotty Pass said I oddly went from shore to kayak back from shore. Do you like shore better or do you like the kayak better? The only thing about shore is I mean there's pros and cons to everything, right? Like if you're if you just like to fish, you can't like and it's you want to get out a lot. Shore fishing is the way to go. It's so easy just to like walk out there, throw a rod in your car, especially if you always have one in your car. If you get off of work, you know, you're going to the store, you just like got a small window of time. It's easy just to get in and out. You can go fish the shore, go hit some docks or whatever it is. And then, then just go home. You don't need to invest the time when you go out on a kayak. I mean, you guys know this. It's like, um, Oh, the judge gifted tense. I was like, what is this thing? Judge gifted 10 submission memberships. Judge, thank you so much for that. Dude, I really appreciate that. You're the man. If you guys got one of those, I think you have to accept it uh, if that is the case. But um, yeah, you get to unlock some um, emotes. And actually, you get uh, free shipping and stuff like that from the store. So there are definitely perks to be a member. But Judge, I really appreciate that, man. So If you guys got one from Judge, thank him. Dude, you're the man. You've always been supported. The Judge, you guys don't know. He's the judge of Spotty Bull, creator of Spotty Bull, longtime supporter of Submission Fishing. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. It means a lot. But yeah, the um, shore fishing is really easy. Or not easy. I think it's harder, but it's it's accessible, I guess, is what the is what I'm trying to say. So that kind of makes sense. I mean, we put the kayak out, it's it's a whole day event. I mean, you can't just like be, you can't just be like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna go kayaking for an hour or 30 minutes like you need at least like two three hours 
like minimum if you're going to make any type of headway. Just by the time you launch, paddle out to your spot. I mean, it's it's an event for sure. You get a boat, you get a bigger boat. I actually got, I had a bigger boat. I actually bought a smaller boat. So I have an offshore boat out here in Florida. Then I ended up buying another boat, but I bought a smaller boat uh, to get around the flats. I got like a little Carolina skiff as like a John boat. And uh, me and Kevin actually took it out last. Uh, I think we actually went out Saturday. Yeah, and we took it out, and it's pretty sick. Man, we were in like just inches of water. We had the push pole, so we put up the motor, and the trolling motor will take us in pretty far. I mean, this thing it goes in like six inches of water. So we had we can get the motor in about a foot and a half, and then we got to turn the trolling motor off, and then from there, usually we just take the push pole and we can push ourselves in, but. Yeah, we were able to turn this thing around in creeks. It was pretty sick. We were looking for him. Um, I got on some, I lost a big redfish. Uh, he got a big one. It was actually kind of a grind. Even though the water was warm, it was like 70 degrees. It still wasn't quite popping off. Got a couple trout, but we kind of checked a new zone. Um, we weren't too familiar with, so we were all kind of learning it. And then on the way back, we actually found uh, some big reds in the grass. It was pretty cool. Definitely a lot of fun. I'm allergic to sharks. Yeah, man. Do I, I don't, I feel like spearfishing. I don't know if it's a big thing in Florida because like, there's not really, I mean, there's sharks in California. I know there are, there's great whites. I like I've seen sharks, but they're not nearly as numerous and they don't cause nearly as many problems. I don't like, especially in my kayak or like in a boat. I don't know if I've ever actually had a fish be sharked. I know it happens, but it's not like a, a thing. Sea lions are more of a nuisance than anything, but out here, dude you fish these wrecks it's like you i legit lose like half my fish sometimes the sharks offshore like it's it's wild it's a real problem and then when you look down your boat you don't want to fall in that water because sometimes there's just like dozens of them especially once the frenzy goes up and one of them got eaten and the blood's in the water it's an absolute nightmare man crazy The Trump money. <laughs> Thank you again, Judge, for those memberships. How do we accept them? I don't I I think it's I don't really know how it works, to be honest with you. Usually it'll ask you, maybe he tells maybe he has to give them to people. Judge, maybe you have to check that. I don't know if you have to like give them to people or if they're just available. Oh yeah, you got it. Heck yeah. Benji, Big Water, Cave Dog. That's awesome, man. Spotty Best says, sure, 100%. Uh, so many more variables. But at this point, my bags are just as big. That's awesome. Yeah. Shore is like, you got to know the spots. I was talking about this earlier, I think, before you came on. Uh, I know there's these guys up in like Orange County in LA. And these dudes, all they do is shore pound. But it's just like, they smash it, dude. Every time they go out, they're just like, putting big numbers so if you know like if you know where to go you can definitely do really well i mean i see the shore the shore guys in um spotty bull obviously getting it done the only time i ever really short fish is like when i've got i've never really dedicated time to it i'm like oh i'll be down somewhere and i'll maybe i'll just then i fish for like 10 minutes and i'm like all right i gotta go <laughs> i gotta really like put the craft i'll put the hammer down to it Hey, no problem, man. We love Spotty Bull. Longtime members, former competitors. Spotty Bull LA. That just happened, man. Our boy, our very own uh, Sammy likes to fish. Number second place, man. That dude had a first place and a second place. Sammy's usually in here, must be working. Graham Oos, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Feels like that bluefin I sent you last week. Yeah, I had a, I actually had a, um, I had a bluefin get eaten by a shark or a seal or something. Like its whole back was eaten out. I think I've got a, one of the, a reel or a short actually on Instagram. You can see it. It was last year. <laughs> big old chunk was taken out. It was like a big fight, and then it just took off. And we we're like, dude, this thing's a two hundred pounder. 
and then it like slacked out and it basically like the it didn't fight anymore we reeled it in and just had a big ass chunk taken out of his back oh man dude i'm so far behind on the chat i just gave it to the 10 people awesome dude When did you get your grill fixed? <laughs> it looks good. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Sacked about my tooth. Had that chipped tooth forever. Finally got it fixed up after like 30 something years. Should have got a gold tooth. That would have been the bomb. But yeah, I mean, it looks like, I don't know if you guys have been out there, but I mean, fishing is definitely starting to heat up. Um, Bluefin numbers are actually coming back, which is funny because that's probably why I've been selling so many like tuna jigs all of a sudden. Everybody's buying a lot of the big stuff. And I was like, oh, this is odd. Uh, being out of the loop of California a little bit, uh, but seeing some of their fish reports and then looking into um, kind of what's going on. looks like Bluefin are already here. Uh, Tony's fish report uh, she was doing for BD Outdoors. Apparently, there was a yellowfin that was already caught, which is crazy because yellowfin typically don't come until way late in the season. Sometimes they don't even show up hardly at all. So the fact that there was already a yellowfin uh, caught in with the bluefin is pretty crazy. So that warm water must be pushing up, which is a good thing. Hopefully it sticks around. But I know last year was kind of the same thing. The bluefin came in really early, uh, like the end of April. I remember I got on some and then like June and July, it, it kind of died off. And then they came back again later in the season. So you just never know uh, what the weather's going to bring, but. I think the boats are running, man. They're definitely getting out there. And then seeing all the spotty pictures you guys have been posting too. So uh, spotty are definitely popping off. I know out here it's been, water's been warmer. And a lot of people have been telling, you know, we didn't have, we weren't that, we, we caught fish. We weren't like, we didn't really crush it last Saturday. But people have been telling me out here, even bluefish, uh, people are catching like 15 pound bluefish on, um, over at the piers and stuff like that, which is freaking wild. And uh, offshore has just always been crazy. So it's like it's starting to get that time of year. I mean, spring, right? The equinox, uh, I think, just happened. So we're officially in spring. Winter's behind us. And uh, time to go out there and kick some ass. Especially now, I think a lot of the fish are spawning and stuff. So they just they get wild and out of control. They have to eat. Um, they're just hungry. They've been in hibernation all year. Especially the fish that stick around, like the spotted bay bass. You know, they don't really go anywhere. They just sit there in the cold water and suffer all year, <laughs> sit under the docks and stuff, uh, just kind of being lethargic, slow down metabolisms. And then once it starts to heat up a little bit and the uh, spawning season starts, it's on. And I think you're starting to see it now. It's just been, I've been seeing tons of fish coming over. So it's either that or it's just warmer and people are starting to fish, but definitely get out there. Benji, Tom Cotton Moreno with the $20 super sticker. Thank you, Benji. I really appreciate that, man. You're the man. You've always been a good supporter of this show. Our Arizona boy right there. We're all over the nation here. Thank you, Benji. I said, hey, dude, I saw that bass you posted the other day. That was awesome, man. Thank you, Benji. It means a lot to me, dude. Keeping the lights on here at the Submission Fishing Headquarters. Tooth with the Submission logo in it. And my wife would love that. They've been catching them at the islands. Uh, what did they make catching over there? Like the yellowtail and stuff? Or the tuna? One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. We need some of those in San Diego. Maybe we'll introduce them into the ecosystem, like the um like the Corvina. Tell California's weather to quit being so bipolar. Yeah, it's it's been like that everywhere. Even here in Florida, it's um, it's been so rainy and cold. Apparently, you said somebody was saying like it's been one of the coldest winters here. Um, I don't know about Florida, but where I'm in Jacksonville, so they were saying it's been one of the coldest winters in like a hundred years or something like that. I don't know if it's true, but it's been really rainy too. So this is my first. I've only lived out here a couple months, right? So I've just just like it rains all the time, and I'm like. I just figured it just rains in the winter here all the time. And somebody was saying that it hardly ever rains 
somebody I bought a trailer from, they were like, yeah, it's really weird that the, it's been raining so much. And I was like, doesn't it just rain in Florida all the time? And they were like, in the summer, it usually does. They're like, almost every afternoon in the summer, it rains. But they're like, the winters are typically really dry, but it's just been, it rains like so much here. So I don't know. I think that's just kind of everybody. Everybody's been getting it. <laughs> what about global warming? <laughs> They don't call it global warming, right? Because remember that it's like it gets cold and then people are like, what about global warming? So then they just like, then it's just called climate change. You're like, okay, well, yeah, climate change could mean anything. Cold, climate change, warm, climate change, rain, climate change, hot, climate change. It's like this such a, such a blanket statement is just crazy. What's the most Florida thing you've seen so far? Um, I haven't really seen some too much craziness, like nothing too wild. You know, I haven't seen any Florida man shenanigans yet. I'll let you know though. Wouldn't climate change be the same as seasons? Yeah, it is. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. It's just, you could say climate change, but like it means anything. It literally just means anything. Like, do you, is the climate supposed to be the same, like 24, seven, 365? Is it supposed to be the same every single year? Like if it's off one degree every day and uh, from the next year, it's like, well, that's, that's climate change. It was 96 today, but it was 97 last year. That's climate change. <laughs> this is chaos, man. I'm just, I'm going to have to turn into the Florida man. You know, if we don't see any, uh, if I don't see any craziness here, I, I, we don't really have the Florida man out here. I don't know if that's, maybe that's like Miami or South Florida. I'm not sure, but I mean, there's dumb asses here. It's just like it was in California, but not, nothing too crazy. See, cause here's the, here's the thing about Florida though. Well, you don't, you know, why you don't see like too many shenanigans is because Florida is, um, as of last July. Florida is a constitutional carry state, so you don't need any type of concealed carry permit to carry a firearm in Florida. So if you can legally own a handgun, like you can buy it and you can legally own it, you can carry it. doesn't matter. You don't need um, a permit. You don't need anything. You just throw it in your car, throw it in your back pocket, throw it in your jacket, your purse. Like it doesn't matter. You can carry it now. So it, honestly, people I, I think are a lot more well-behaved when you know that probably I don't know what percentage, but a lot of people around, I know I do, even in California, I carried, I have a, I had a CCW in California, uh, one of the rare ones, but I carried everywhere in California, but that was pretty rare. You know, most people don't here in Florida, you don't even, it just doesn't matter. It's like, my wife goes out with the baby. I'm like, take a gun. <laughs> it's like, okay, throw it in your bag or whatever. Like you're going to go walk the baby around the park, take a firearm. So I, but I think that cuts down on the shenanigans big time because you you just don't know now. You just assume everybody, every every person here is like packing a firearm because they probably are. Catch Florida man on the flip phone. Yeah, Kevin would probably be a good Florida man. Lots of plastic pink flamingos. No, I haven't really seen any of those. Uh, someone like... Uh, I've seen like some decor deal with it. Like people have like, I've seen like paintings and like some restaurants and stuff, but I haven't really seen the pink flamingos outside. In St. Augustine, there is real pink flamingos out in the, uh, in the Bay. That's pretty cool. Benji says that's why he moved to Arizona. Is Arizona constitutional carry or is it just easier to get your concealed carry? Is Mudo going around strapped? I do. I walk around strapped all the time. You and people don't know that. Even in um, California, whenever I always carried in California, always I always had a um, nine millimeter on me, and I had a license, I, I so I could legally do it. I still have the license; it's valid till uh, the twenty fifth. But in Florida, everywhere I go, for years, I mean, probably four years, I've always carried. Everybody should carry a firearm. Like, there's no reason not to. 
you know, if you can't protect yourself, it's like, it's worthless. You never use it. I've never had to pull it out. I've never had to use it. Never had to even threaten anybody with it. I mean, so it's, it's fine. Hopefully you never have to use it. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like, you don't ever want to have to use one, but it's one of those situations where you're going to be glad you have one. You guys know, actually, and I'm not a lawyer, so you guys look into this, but I believe in California, you can legally carry a firearm if you're fishing, uh, fishing and, um, hunt, like maybe hunting. But I think if you're fishing, you can carry, I don't know if it's open carry or concealed carry, but you can carry a firearm, uh, on you when you're fishing. That is an actual law, I believe, in California. I don't think anybody ever really does it, but I'm pretty sure it's on the books. Maybe I'll, have, maybe I'll look that up and we'll talk about it on the next show if it is a thing. In case a sea lion shows up, yeah. Yeah, you never know. What if one jumps in your boat, man? Cal said my CCW came in today. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the renewal. The only thing I said about California, yeah, we had to renew it, and I just renewed it like before I left. and you have to like take a class. It's only valid for a couple of years and you got to go take a class again and the shooting. And that's not really a bad thing. Like you have to qualify for it, which isn't bad. I mean, even if you're going to carry here in Florida, I mean, you should know how to shoot a gun. You should be proficient with it. I mean, that just, that's common sense. People policing stupid people. <laughs> Then you said I can walk in a gun shop or pawn shop in about 30 minutes. Yeah. So they don't have like the cool down, right? Like, you know, in California, if, I don't know how we got in talking to firearms, but like if you get a firearm in California, you have to, there's like a 10 day cooling off period, you know, and then you can only buy so many guns like at a certain time. Yeah. So they're in Arizona. I guess you can just, you can go in and buy one. That's pretty cool. Cave Duck said that fanny pack didn't fool me. Yeah, other people that carry, they know. The man purse, always packing the nine millimeter. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to look into that fishing thing though. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can legally carry when you fish. It's interesting. Graham said I had to renew last month. New California law, law required. Yeah, eight hour class with one of those hours, a mental health class. Yeah. So I had to do a class. Like I said, right before I left, I had to renew. I had to, yeah, I had to go do a class. I didn't have a mental health class though. One hours of those mental health class. I, I don't think that was part of the curriculum. So what about all those white sea bass swimming through La Jolla as well right now? I haven't heard that, but if that's the case, man, you, I don't know what you guys are waiting for. You need to get on them. Uh, I, I've never caught a white, well, not like a big white sea. I've never caught like a big legal white sea bass as one of the, that's why they call it the gray ghost. You know, that's a very hard fish to catch. I know like the channel islands has them and I've heard La Jolla. They've been really good too. Uh, at certain points they come in within, uh, certain years. They've been really good. You know, like five, 10 years ago, they were like really thick and then they haven't really been around. I haven't seen them in a long time, but if there are white sea bass, in um la jolla man i'd definitely get down there and try to get one that's pretty awesome but yeah that's one of the rare fish i've caught those small ones you know like those little rat white sea bass but i don't really count those but like an actual big big fat 20 30 pounder i haven't caught but um yeah as you guys get down there if, if they are in la jolla man that's, that's something to take advantage of because they're not there all the time as of 2024 oh they've got the new class as I said on the podcast with Kevin, oh, buddy, you got your buddy got a 71 pound white sea bass, 71 pound white sea bass in La Jolla. So they are there. Man, you guys got to check it out. Did they send the um, I'm curious, did they send the head to. Um, what is that? There's that institute in Carlsbad that. Didn't you do like a tour there, Graham? You did. um hubs is that what it's called the hubs in carlsbad they're a, they do a fishery um restoration project where they've been like growing white sea bass and then releasing them out in the wild and they found they've been finding like 80 percent of wild white sea bass have the um 
they have the genetic markers like in their bones. And so if you send the head in, they can trace if it came from the hubs Institute. Yeah. Hubs. I'm curious. Should ask him if he sent the, sent the head in unless he released it, but you should never release a white sea bass that big. That's good eating right there. That's good stuff. We got a few hours left. I know I came on late. Uh, we'll see. We can do some questions if you guys want. It's up to you. I mean, not really too much going on. Big water. Oh man, you guys, all kinds of questions. Where do you want to travel? Do you want a fishing trip in Alaska, Maine, Bahamas, etc.? I've actually fished in Alaska. Um, I fished in Greece. I've done the Atlantic, the Pacific. You know, probably Australia, I guess I would say, or New Zealand. I just, I see some of the videos there and it's just crazy. When they catch like the sailfish or swordfish in right there on the surf, like 20 feet of water or less, it's, that's pretty crazy. I'd say probably Australia. I have, I mean, Alaska, I would definitely go back and fish Alaska. I did halibut fishing up there uh, only for one day. I would have fished, I should have fished a lot more when I was up there, but um, that was obviously pretty epic. Alaska, every, every, I, anybody should go fish Alaska. If you love fishing, definitely Alaska. But I, I'd say probably, probably like Australia for sure. Have you caught any snook? No. You need like a license or a permit or something for that. I'm not really sure. It's like one of these things, like in Florida, they have all these like um, endorsements on your license, which is like really stupid that they don't cost anything, a lot of them, but like you have to have them. <laughs> It doesn't doesn't make sense. Like to to fish reef fish out here, you you need this uh, endorsement on your license, but the endorsement costs nothing. You just have to click on the site, and then you click the endorsement, and then you have the reef fish endorsement, and it's zero dollars. But if you don't have it, and you catch reef fish, it's like illegal. It's like why? <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. Like just put it in your put. I, I they're probably trying to track people. I, I guess probably seeing how many people are fishing reefs and stuff like that, but it's still kind of stupid. Driftwood fishing said rigging and line weights to be the most effective with the jigs. Really that all depends what you're fishing for. Um, I don't think it's that necessary to go too light uh, with jig. If you're vertical jigging, uh, because typically it's a reaction bite and you know, it's all depends if you're in open water, you can get away with lighter line, but if you're fishing kelp or docks, Typically, I tend to go a little heavier just so you don't get broken off. Um, you know, like I said, it's not a finesse thing. It's power fishing and it's um, usually pretty heavy, pretty heavy structure. So usually I, I go heavy and I haven't had too many issues um, as far as like them being line shy. It's better than than having them run into a wreck or wrap you around kelp or get stuck on a piling. It just screws everything up. But again, it, if you're offshore fishing for tuna and pelagics, you can. It doesn't really matter because you're not dealing with the bottom or structure. Uh, you can get away with a little more finesse. But uh, typically, I run a little heavier, probably probably heavier line than most people. I would say. I mean, sometimes I fish docks for spotties with like twenty pound, and a lot of these dudes are running like six pound test uh, out here in Florida. When I'm fishing on the wrecks, um, I'm straight up running like sixty, eighty pound uh, mono fluorocarbon. And a lot of that is because it's so shallow when we're fishing amberjacks, but sometimes it's like less than a hundred feet. And the problem is when you've hooked these fish, they'd run straight down into the wrecks. The wrecks or artificial reefs are typically boats that have been decommissioned. So when they get hooked, they just dive straight down. So what we do is we button, like we keep that drag, like basically buttoned all the way down. You guys have seen some of my videos where I'm catching the fish and they basically like pull me down or pull me over or like I'm tripping over myself. That's usually because we have no drag on the reel. If you've got 30, 40 pound drag buttoned all the way down, that's like, it's so hard to hold on to. And I have to rail rod them a lot, but that's because when they get hooked, it's so shallow when you're fishing the bottom, you have to get them out of the wreck. If you have too much drag and they take off, you're never, you're never going to see that fish. They're going to break you off. You're going to get stuck in the wreck. So, um, we're using super, super heavy line here ridiculously heavy when we're fishing the wrecks then obviously when we're doing redfish and stuff um it's a lot lighter because they don't really have you know you're six feet or yeah six feet or less sometimes six inches of water catching these redfish they don't really have much to run
Jeremy said another way to stop people from getting a firearm. There's some messed up people that shouldn't have one. Yeah, but they're going to keep anyone that seeks any type of mental health as an amount. Yeah, this, I mean, that's really the downside to it. They already make the barrier so hard, you know. But really, I mean, truly, this is my opinion. I mean, mental health is like, that. that's the biggest problem. It's everybody blames firearms, but forcing these people are going to kill people regardless. Submission in Alaska? Yeah. Someday. <clears throat> Someday. I sent some submissions with a buddy to Fish Alaska. They destroyed uh, the lings and rockfish up there. Dude, that's awesome. I think I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, those are good jig fish too. Rockfish and lings love jigs, dude. That's great. Keep an eye on the structure. Yes, sir. All right, guys. I'll let you all go. Thanks for tuning in. Um, just some general you know, conversation this week. Nothing too big. Nothing too exciting on the story front. Just some fishing's heating up. Um, you know, go out there and fish while you can. We got white sea bass out there in La Jolla. The spotties are popping off. Uh, fishing looks like it's getting pretty good. So um, definitely go out there and fish. Thank you guys for all the support. I uh, really appreciate it. All you guys for uh, buying jigs, posting stories, uh, posting pictures of your catch. That really means a lot to me. And um, yeah, just thank you for that, guys. And uh, we got some big orders coming in. Remember, we got jerseys on sale. We'll be on sale pretty soon. We've got the uh, submission C going on. So we got a lot going on. Um, spring, summer's coming up. It's going to be good. And uh, hopefully we've got a big stock and we'll get you all a bit out there. And appreciate you guys tuning in. Richie Rich, what's going on, man? Thanks for joining. Big Water, Jeremy, Cave Dog, Driftwood. Thanks for all the support, guys. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Oos.